Hi there, this is Mark Edelman, speech language pathologist. This is another video about apraxia. Well, why am I doing videos about apraxia now? Because, well, a lot of people with aphasia have apraxia, and you can't do aphasia therapy unless the individual can speak clearly. All right? So you've got to address the apraxia. The apraxia is the motor problem. The apraxia is difficulty moving the tongue to make the sounds of speech. So if you want to have clarity of speaking, you've, you've got to be able to teach the person who's gotten apraxia the sounds of speech so that they can learn the sounds of speech again and make the sounds of speech again. And once they can make the sounds, they can put the sounds together and make up words, okay? Now, I, I threw that at you kind of fast, but it's simple. The sounds, you gotta be able to produce the sounds in speech. Once you produce the sounds in speech, you can produce words in speech. When you produce words in speech, then the person who's listening to you or the person you're talking to understands the word. When they understand and or when they comprehend the word, they understand what you're saying. So to, uh, to help a person with apraxia, and I'm talking predominantly both to caregivers and speech therapists, uh, it's like dancing. You know, I had a sister when I was in sixth or seventh grade and she used to try to teach me how to dance. And then uh, in the beginning, I used to trip over her feet. Y you know, I used to, uh, uh, it was like carting around a, a, a 50 pound bag of potatoes. <laughs> but after a while, you know, uh, she slowed it way, way down, and I first learned how to slow dance. And many of you may have also learned this, maybe not, but um, it was very difficult in the beginning to learn how to dance. But if you do it slowly and you follow the person that you're dancing with, you pick up the step after a while. Now, so uh, my sister taught me how to dance and I ended up being a pretty good dancer. And I used to go to dances and things like that. And, you know, you'd always dance with, uh, uh, with a girl who was so light on her feet that it was like you weren't dancing with anybody. They, were, they just could follow you so, 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 so well. And it was so great. Uh, and, then, and then you'd invite somebody else out on the dance floor. And again, they, they, it would be like lugging around 50 pounds of potatoes. You know, they just didn't know how to follow. Now, a person with apraxia, a person with aphasia, has to learn how to follow just in dancing, just like in dancing. And in dancing, it starts out very, very slowly, and you trip over your feet all the time. And the same thing happens in speech therapy when you learn it, okay? So with time, however, the, you and the person with aphasia learn how to move the tongue, move the teeth, move the jaw, move the throat slowly and correctly. And so with apraxia, what happens is in the beginning, you've got to talk very slowly because it's very, uh, you have to think all the time. Now, where do I have to put my tongue? But after a while, just like in dancing, just like after a while, a person learns how to move their tongue to make sounds. Once they do that, they can make words. Once they do that, they can make phrases. Once they can do that, they can make sentences. Once they can do that, they can be in conversation and tell you whatever they need to tell you, whether they need to tell you the, that they love you or whether or not to tell you to go jump in the lake. I mean, they're, they're, speech is a wonderful avenue. And when speech disappears, uh, there's there's so much richness and beauty in communication that's lost. And that's why I spend almost every day of my life uh, teaching people about aphasia, teaching people about apraxia, teaching people about speech. Why is that? Well, it's because it's one of the most important things that the human being does. And the problem is, that a lot of people are chasing after silver bullets that don't do the job. And they're very disappointed. They're, uh, you know, and then there are others 
who find therapists who understand these things, okay? And they improve. So don't leave it up to the healthcare delivery system, please. Don't do that because your therapy will be terminated before you know it. You've got to learn this stuff if you want to help your loved ones speak better. It's just that plain and simple. So this is Mark Idleman just sharing some ideas, a, little few, a few more ideas about apraxia, and hope you have a great day today. If you've liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. And down below the video are the typical links that if you want to contact me, if you want to fill out a questionnaire, if you want me to talk to you on the phone, if you want, have any questions that you have for me, if you want to consider t having me teach you what to do to help your loved one speak again, wouldn't that be great? And um, there's an uh, independent study course that I've developed for apraxia and for aphasia, but the apraxia one ha hasn't come out yet, but the aphasia one has. So we have a book, we have a video, we have one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So uh, we try to fulfill your needs, your needs to help your loved one speak. So this is Mark Edelman, speech language pathologist. Don't forget the thumbs up and we'll see you soon, okay? Bye-bye now.